May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. In this video, we're going to be talking about the parable of the lost son. The lost son. Let's let's read this. This is this is very very beautiful, and I just I just love this. I love all the parables of the Messiah. Just enjoying the weather. It was raining. That's what made me get under the tree, and it stopped. And now the sun. Hold on, I gotta show you how this because it just popped out so beautifully. You know, fast and quick. Looks so beautiful out here, man. So beautiful out here. You know, we definitely don't worship the sun. Reading that in Deuteronomy, nor the moon or the stars. We worship our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the Master of the heavens and the earth. Oh, man, it's a beautiful day. I love it. I love it. So, I gotta get this vitamin D. So, I guess we'll continue our walk. Oh, it's just a little misty. So, yeah. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods falling to me. And he divided his livelihood between them. And not many days after the younger son, having gathered all together, went away to a distant country and there wasted his goods with loose living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe scarcity of food throughout that land. And it began to be in need. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him to his, to his fields to feed pigs. And he was, and to understand, brothers and sisters, what this brother went through, even though he may have put himself in a situation, he still went through things, have compassion on him. He's an, and he sent, and then understand that he, he was never like acquainted to this lifestyle. So him being into a whole different type of lifestyle that he was never acquainted to, this, this can affect you, you know, more than people who was doing this their whole lives. He was doing some other stuff his whole life. So this can affect him. And I take this into accordance with my own life and the things that I went through. And he sent him to his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to fill his stomach with the pods which the pigs were eating. And no one gave to him. But having come to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I am perishing with hunger. Having come to myself, note that you can be lost and then come to yourself. Come to an understanding with yourself and realize what you were doing was wrong. Like a lost sheep. You know, which the scriptures speak about, spoke about in this parable as well. Above this, there was another parable just about if you have 99 sheep, it's beautiful that I just had to that squirrel eating a nut. But uh, he was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, and he's like, if you have a lost sheep, you're not going to go out and you get your sheep. Rejoice over that lost sheep coming back. Okay, so we'll continue with the parable. Having risen, I shall go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He said, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. This is how I felt in my own life with my real dad. But listen to what his dad says to him. And having risen, he went to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. And ran, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet, and bring the fat and calf here, and slaughter it, and let us eat and rejoice, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. And they began to rejoice. Beautiful. And his older son was in the field. And when he came and approached the, the house, he heard music and dancing. And having called one of the servants, he asked what this meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received him back in health. And he was wroth and would not go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. And answering, he said to his father, See, these many years I have been serving you, and I have never transgressed the command of yours. But to me, you have never given a young goat, so I could rejoice with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with horns, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Then he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all I have is yours. And we have to rejoice and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive, and was lost and is found. We had to rejoice and be glad. Yeah, and this is just what our father put on my heart to speak. We had to rejoice and be glad 
Do not be mad. Your brother was dead and is alive and was lost and now is found. Don't be mad if you see one of your brothers who was lost and now is found. Don't be like, he was lost like me and look what he's doing now. Or I was doing the good thing the whole time and now look at this guy. He was lost and now he's found. You know, like, listen to how that sounds. I know you have been on the right path, but if somebody comes and repents, have compassion on them. They are making a huge step for themselves and their life. You should rejoice and be happy for them. This is a happy moment. You don't even know what they went through, regardless if they put themselves in that situation. They still went through things. Have compassion on them. Be like his dad. And having risen, he went to his father, and while he was still a long way off, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's love. Be moved with compassion. Don't harden your heart and be proud. Don't harden your heart and be boastful and full of arrogance. What is love? Let's figure out what love is. Ahava. Love is patient. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not de demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Amen. May our Father, and Son, Holy Spirit be with us. I love you all, brothers and sisters. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my walk. Enjoy the rest of my day. Peace and love.